uh, this video is going to kind of mark the start of uh, some new videos uh, talking about something I really enjoy. Uh, it's a little bit of a departure from some of the VMS stuff, although sort of related. Uh, talking about kind of classic Unix or, or X Windows window managers, um, desktop environments, uh, toolkits, all that uh, good stuff. And that may explain why you're sitting here looking at a nested X section, X session with nothing on it on the screen right now. Uh, for the first one, going to look at uh, OpenLock or Open Windows, uh, which is a, a classic. Um, you know, it wasn't really even anything but a spec. Uh, but of course, Sun had the OpenLock, uh, you know, desktop or Open Windows. It was included in Solaris up until I think it was definitely in Solaris eight. I don't know if it made it into Solaris nine. I probably should have checked on that before I started talking. Uh, but it, it it had its its beginnings back in the uh, 1980s, late 1980s. Um, uh, it was Sun and AT and T, and that sort of kicked off some of the um, you know some of the issues in the the Unix business because you know, AT and T was real Unix. Uh, Sun was kind of the the leading edge workstation builder. Um, you know they were of course Sun OS at that point was BSD based, but the others viewed that as kind of a threat and so what you got out of that one of the products of this was motif was hp taking their kind of uh window manager and desktop and uh joining forces with others and you get motif um now i think uh open look is still kind of if you wanted a, a clean classic window manager that's really easy for anyone to understand um go with open look well let's let's fire it up and then i'll, I'll talk a little bit more so i'm using zephyr here and i'm running this off a, a free bsd 32-bit system um, you know, for the real true experience, I probably should have done QMU and run like SunOS 4 or a Solaris on Spark or find an older, I, I don't know, I can't find my older Solaris distribution, um, disks, which is a shame. Uh, you know, Solaris x86 could have done this. But let's, uh, set this up. Now, one thing for the display, if you're going to be using open windows, some of the stuff expects the screen or the server dot screen notation rather than just a server assuming screen zero. So a little caveat there. So let's fire up open look. So nice classic blue background. Um, so as I was saying, open look kind of has the, uh, it's got a, a great clean classic look, uh, influenced a lot by Xerox, um, you know, and the, the Xerox look. And of course Xerox, they did invent the kind of the wimp GUI that we're all familiar with now, um, and unlike Apple or Microsoft or everyone else, I think Sun and AT&T actually gave them some money, uh, so it was it was it was a little bit more official. Open Look was great, um, so FreeBSD here. Some of the stuff doesn't work, so some of the the tool set isn't in there. So like command tool, something with the pseudo terminals, but uh, we can fire up an X term just to see something here and so you get root windows you get pinning so you can pin this up here uh, so a lot of menus are pinnable and this is part of the open look spec so it's really functional and imagine this was 1988 1989 uh, this would come out and Sun had some interesting uh, windowing systems before that like news which maybe uh, maybe we'll do another video on I'm not as familiar with that but that was a you know some of these weird and wacky things that were not exactly X Windows, but this was this was based on X Windows. I think, although X News, which was Sun's kind of hybrid X server, could have run it. Uh, but you get this classic blue background. You get the nicely defined windows, uh, drag corners, uh, title bar. You know, this is all pretty standard stuff. Everyone knows the the kind of classic, you know, window mouse pointer uh, stuff. So again, there's only one control button, so that that differentiates it a little bit. In that way, it's in that way, it's a little bit more like something like a TWM, which is my personal favorite window manager. I've used it for years and years and years. You might say, why am I not using it here? I'm on a laptop at home with just a touchpad, and TWM doesn't really lend itself to a touchpad, so I can use XFCE um, on this laptop. My other laptop with a different touchpad uh, motif works a little bit better. Um, the other reason I don't use open look today is that it's not 64-bit compatible so for modern os's that run it 
uh, the BSDs in 32-bit are probably your best bet to get it up and running. Uh, free BSD 32-bit, or I386, I should say, um, runs flawlessly except for things like shell tool and command tool, but you really don't want to use them. They're kind of crusty. Um, but again, it won't, it, it has issues, you know, it's a 32-bit it's, it's a uh, piece of software. So modern 64-bit systems, and as you know, I like Slackware, and while you can do multi-lib on Slackware, ooh, I don't, so uh, I like a pure 64-bit system. So at back to the open look. There's one control button on the title bar, and just like TWM, default action is to iconify. Uh, and you get an icon box down here by default, uh, but then you give it, and that's with the left click, you give it a right click, you get your window operations. Uh, so, you know, things like move, you would do that anyway from the title bar. Um, close is what they mean iconify by. So again, nothing uh, nothing cosmic here. Um, so, pretty basic. I mean, this is going to be <laughs> a pretty short video because this is kind of a, a really basic window manager. And it doesn't have the customizability of something like a TWM. Um, where you can spend hours tweaking it to your liking. This is great. And I think this, in many ways, was as easy to use as uh, the classic Mac OS interface, which everyone claimed, oh, it's so easy to use. This was as easy to use. Um, so this comes with some stuff. Uh, there's props, which uh, gives you some workspace property. And again, you see the, the, the pinning uh, concept. So again, some of these concepts that are now becoming more, ooh, you know, you can pin things. No, you could pin things back in the 80s, right? It's, it's nothing new. Um, you know, Amiga had their own, their own, you know, weird and wonderful way to do it. But you can define the icon box, let's say, put that on the left. And we now get the icon box over there. Um, let's see, what other things do we have? Menus, you know, again, not a whole lot of... Uh, stuff here. So the other thing here is your initial mouse press. This defines one of the, the core behaviors that I actually really like is, you know, your left click says, oh, do your default menu item. And that's one of the things about the open look spec is it defined kind of default. So if you have a file menu, um, hey, that's save, right? The default is save. So you had some regularity in apps that were done for open look. Sadly, Outside of Sun-based stuff, Open Look never really took off. It should have, um, but it didn't. Again, everyone else said, ooh, let's go do our own thing. Let's do Motif. Um, and then Motif had more of a Windows 3031 look to it uh, that I think in some ways looks a little worse than this. Um, but, of course, Motif became adopted and then ended up making its way into CDE and Deck Windows. Um, and in the end, kind of became became dominant. And one wonders what might have happened had there not been this kind of weird competition and infighting in uh, the world of Unix. And again, it was it was separated. And we use Linux on the desktop now. Say, oh, you know, PCs. There, Unix on PC was not... I mean, yeah, you could do it. Uh, things like Xenix or, or SCO, but they weren't really what you wanted. You know, you needed either, you know, mini computers or high-end workstations. Kind of the you know, the $10,000 workstation. Although that price, you know, was, was off-quoted, the, the mega penny, as they say. It wasn't necessarily that uh, that high. There were some, some lower-cost workstations. Um, ones that was my favorite was a low-cost workstation, the SGI-02. Uh, nice little, you know, blue blob of a workstation. But so you get your, your properties here, and you see if clicking with the left gets you back to default. Um, not a whole lot to change, not a whole lot to customize here. Obviously you can customize your menus a little bit, add items here. Um, not a whole lot. And again, here under FreeBSD you don't get a lot of the desk set items. So you don't get the calculator, you do get the clock, um, classic clock, and eh, not too much to say about that. Again, properties, you see how everything has a kind of nice spec to it. Very consistent, clean look. Um, kind of a shame it isn't more popular. Uh, so I'm going to change that over to analog just for fun. And we get our analog clock. And with some stuff pinned, let's unpin the properties there. So, yeah, nothing too cosmic there. Uh, the other thing you get, actually, 
in the desk out here that works on FreeBSD, and this is uh, the text editor that comes with it. And I've, I've actually spent a lot of time uh, using this. It's, it's a very functional text editor. You know, is it as powerful as Emacs? Absolutely not. Is as powerful as as you know some of these smaller editors like a Pico or a Nano? Absolutely. Um, and it's just a, a basic kind of functional text editor. Um, you know, OpenLick has these nice scroll bars. Uh, let's see if I can put some text in here. Uh, yeah. Something's going on with the the text input. Like I said, this is a an an exercise in frustration to to run this today outside of say going to a a Solaris eight or so. Um, but you get your text there. Let's see if I can paste something in there. Yeah, no, it's not letting me uh, let me update. So some issues there with uh, whatever's going on. This is FreeBSD ten. Uh, this might work better with an older FreeBSD. Uh, but as a quick note, quit is uh, what you'd expect close to be, whereas close is the iconify. So, you know, we want to discard our edits. This also might just be that, um, you know, some fonts aren't installed correctly. Um, and so that kind of wraps it up here. This is really just kind of, you know, my thoughts on this classic window manager. Um, Probably next up in these, taking a look at the the kind of the, the heavier hitters. Um, TWM, my favorite, just because it's it's about as simple as you can get. I think it was probably the second ever window manager made, um, but it just suits and it's fast and it's easy and ooh, it's got a taskbar. It's like 1986 and they had a taskbar. You know, Windows kind uh, doc or whatever you want to call it. Icon manager is what TWM calls it. Um, so it has some really great, powerful features. Um, you know, leave a comment uh, if you want to see anything else. Um, I'm probably going to do after TWM maybe Motif. Um, again, I use Motif on a daily basis on my my smaller laptop with a different touchpad. It works wonderfully. See here, I'm using XFCE. Uh, I used KDE for a while. Uh, didn't stopped using it around the the transition to KDE four. I don't know why. Maybe because XFC was just a little bit more more lightweight, um, but I, I can't really think of any other classic window managers to use. I know in the '90s, uh, FVWM was the the big deal, and I uh, I don't know. I never I never caught on with FVWM. I was I was using TWM or Motif or you know OpenLook at that time. Um, Whereas FVWM, and then of course GNOME, maybe ancient GNOME. Uh, another video I might do, and, and let me know if you know, put a comment if you want to see this, or uh, or whatnot. Is uh, looking at uh, classic Linux on uh, emulated Spark and QEMU, um, which I remember I got you know playing around with Linux on a, my Spark station IPC way back in the 90s. Uh, that was Red Hat actually, probably the last time I used Red Hat. Uh, for anything beyond uh, cursing at it. So, um, well, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, quick view of this and uh, open look and open windows. And uh, maybe I'll do another one on this if I fire up a Solaris emulator or a SunOS, you know, in emulation um, at some point later using QMU or TME. Uh, well, that's it for now. Thanks.